Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about something that is pretty overlooked in the gaming PC building community. Now, if you've ever watched a video on what parts you should buy for, let's say an 800 and below PC, chances are the build contained a fantastic graphics card, but a lacking CPU. And the reason for this is obvious, or so it seems. Since it's a gaming PC, you should spend more money on the graphics card, meaning you spend a ton less on the CPU, right? Well, that's where it gets a little tricky. See, you can do that, but it will potentially lead to some issues, and I would love to explain it to you guys. But before I dive straight into it, I would really appreciate it if you checked out my channel, I post PC tech videos, among other things. Also, if you have any comments or questions as the video goes along, be sure to drop a comment. If you like the video, drop a like, and if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub. It really helps out the channel. Okay, so chances are you've read the title. It says don't cheap out on a CPU, and basically what I'm saying is you shouldn't spend too little on a CPU so that you can get a better graphics card. Here's the thing that a good handful of PC building beginners don't understand. The graphics card is only one of the many pieces to the puzzle when it comes to how your game performs. The CPU you're using actually has a huge effect on how well the game will run. These two parts actually work hand in hand when you're playing your games. Now obviously the graphics card takes care of most of the tasks for the game because it's what renders and draws the image on your screen and makes it all pretty, but without the CPU that's impossible because the central processor still does a lot of work to despite the fact that it doesn't take care of how pretty your game looks. Everything goes through the CPU before it's sent to the graphics card. That's why bottlenecking is a thing. If you're not aware, bottlenecking usually refers to when the CPU is underpowered and as a result causes the GPU to not be as fast as it should be because the CPU simply can't keep up with it. Hence, it's called a bottleneck effect. The data is too much for the CPU, so when it tries to get over to the GPU, the data can't travel over fast enough because the central processor is a quote unquote bottleneck and is too thin compared to the rest of the items, as you can see here with this picture. So that's my simplified explanation. So now let me give some examples. You have a budget of say $600 and YouTuber A says, hey, with this budget, you can get a really good graphics card. No, seriously, get a used 1600 AF Ryzen processor and the GTX 1660. Now, although that's a great pair, a few things will become evidently sucky. In about a year or two, you'll probably want to upgrade your graphics card, maybe because you got a new high res, high refresh rate monitor, or just want to be able to play in ultra settings with 100 FPS and above consistently. You may want to upgrade to the RTX 2070, but the problem is by doing that, you'll leave the CPU behind because the 1600 AF isn't exactly the best CPU to be using to avoid a bottleneck when pairing it with a 2070. And it breaks the rule of how the CPU should always be at least half the price of the graphics card, at least with its MSRP. What MSRP basically is, is what the seller intended for the part to cost. Now to find the MSRP price of what a specific part is, just go to Google and type in the name of the part and then type MSRP. It really all just comes down to, do you want to immediately have the best performance or do you want to have a balanced build that will be easy to upgrade in the future while still providing good performance. Now, personally, I'm a bigger fan of the route of being balanced because in most cases, people do upgrade their PC and it's usually the graphics card that gets upgraded. So let's look at one of my own examples. With my $700 PC build, I chose a Ryzen 3600 paired with the RX 580. A 1650 Super would have also worked. A lot of people commented that I could have spent less on the CPU and more on the graphics card, but there was a reason I didn't do that and it's simply because I wanted to have the user to be able to easily upgrade the graphics card without ever having to worry about any of the other parts. I guess you could say it's a way of future-proofing it. It's a balanced computer, what can I say? So the point I'm really trying to get across is that if you want a PC that you can easily upgrade, won't have a bottleneck problem so that you can get the full performance of your graphics card, remember to not underspend on your CPU for the sake of your graphics card and to follow the general rule of thumb to spend at least half on the CPU that you did on your graphics card. All right, and now for the second part of this video, the channel update. I have a few things I wanna go over, pretty important stuff, all relevant to PC building. So one and two, I have all the parts ready for both a budget $550 PC build and $1,000 PC build. So I will be doing a build tutorial and benchmark videos for both of those. So be sure to stick around for that. I'm really excited. These will be performance builds, meaning that they will be the absolute best performance that you can get 
for the price without bottlenecking. Really excited to get started on these, as I said, especially because I learned so much from the input you guys gave me on my first build tutorial video. It will definitely be a higher quality video. Let me just put it that way. Third thing, streaming and a gaming channel. So I might make a secondary channel or a Twitch account or just something like that so I can connect with you guys a little better. I feel like I get a little too serious on this channel and I mean, it makes sense. I'm discussing computer parts, money, numbers, blah, blah, blah. But it's always a good idea to connect and answer questions away from the Rutech channel. So if you guys want to see something like that, let me know in the comments. Fourth thing, Discord. Discord, of course, would be a great way to connect with you guys, answer some questions, just make things a little more organized. So I did make a Discord. You can find the link to join that in the description of this video and in the comment section on my pinned comment. Fifth and final thing, the website. So I do have plans to make an official website marketplace. On this website, I will be able to do build commissions, sell used computer parts, Windows licenses, have a blog, etc. I get a lot of emails from people asking me to build a computer for them and send it over. Now I do do this type of stuff. I have a building fee plus shipping, but I wanna make it a little more official and easy to do versus a back and forth email conversation. So with this website, I will post all my builds and you can choose whichever you'd like, pay for the parts plus the build fee and shipping, and then it'll be a done deal. This is due to change as it's only in its baby steps, still planning it out, figuring out how I will really do it. But yeah, that is one of the big things I want to do for this whole root tech thing. And of course, input is always appreciated. So if you have any ideas or questions, of course, go ahead and drop a comment. I read almost every comment you guys drop, so don't think I can't see what you guys are saying. So that will do it for this video. Appreciate you guys, 12.6K subs. Did not see that coming so fast. So once again, thank you guys so, so much. Thanks for watching. Peace out.